Okay, so what we have here is our loop interface and next to that we've got our diagnostic tool which is the Apollo loop tester. At the moment you can see it's polling through 126 addresses all on the one screen. Um, it's in XP95 mode and we can attach our loop interface to the diagnostic tool. So we've got a negative connection and a positive connection. Now our uh, interface has powered up and we can see some information on the screen. We can also see on the loop tester that we've now got a device at address 16. Using the touch screen of the interface we can look at the individual address and we can see that it's uh, currently in fault, so it's got an analog value of 4 at address 16. So our address mechanism on here is set up to give you address 16. And because we've got the case off, that's why we're in fault. So if we were to push the case temper button in, we get a normal condition on our loop interface of analog value 16. So that's a normal condition. If I go back to our squares, we'll see that square change from blue to green. So if we had our lid on this unit, it would not be in fault. Okay, so we've got our uh, power LED and obviously we've got the fault light on because we're currently in fault. But you can see our display and this is the display that you would normally see when you power up this unit. So we've got devices, uh, zero, so there's no devices logged on here at the moment. Alarms, AL for alarms, zero. FT for faults, and that is also at zero. So no devices, no alarms, no faults. And if we click on our menu button, so we just push it, it says device status. And if we scroll, we can see add new device, remove device, interface status, and radio channels. And those are the five main menus inside the expander interface. So if we press the back button, we go back to the beginning. In this current state, with no devices add on, added on, what we can do is we can set the radio channels. Now, if you've only got one interface, you don't need to bother about setting the radio channels. You'll just use default channels. If you, you can have up to five of these on a loop. And if you had five of them all on the same loop in the same building, it would be a good idea to change the radio channels of each interface and actually it probably has to be done if these items are relatively close together so sort of less than 100 meters apart and the reason for that is if you don't set the radio channels up differently on each device you'll end up with faults on the system and the batteries of all your wireless devices wearing down way before their three year uh, recommended working life. So um, three to five year recommended working life. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look at the radio channels. So if we click on the menu button, scroll to radio channels, click on the button again, it says what we're currently using. So if I click on that, it tells us that channel one is number 8 and channel 2 is 26 so those are the default channels 8 and 26 now we can change those if we go back we don't use auto select because auto select will just use the next two default channels so we use manual select if we click on the manual select button it says first channel. Click on that. It tells us channel one and we can change it. So let's change it to 
15. No, 16. We'll change it to. Then if we move back, second channel, click on that, and we'll change that to 32. And we've selected that. So now if we press back twice and go back to currently used channels, we can see that they've changed. We've now got 16 and 32. All these radio channels are given on the lid of our interface as a checklist on the back of the lid. And for each interface, we will select two channels. We're always using one upper band and one lower band of 868 megahertz. And each interface will have two of these channel selections for each uh, interface.